Well, it is the Bet Fred Boxing Show, and it is a heavyweight special this week. No surprise, of course, with what has just occurred in Las Vegas a few days ago. Anthony Crawler, well, you're remote today, aren't you? You're in the gym. Just give us a little feel yeah. for where you are and what you've been up to today. Yep, background, especially for you guys. I thought, yeah, I'll do it in the gym before rather than can't have many better settings than this. Um, some of the fights you've been into, they know I've been here with Joe Gallagher's gym. Um, Gloves Community Centre, when um, there's been some great sparring, um, a gym over from Ireland, or Rocks in Dublin, and there's been some great sparring. So, um, yeah, I've been holding pads and watching some great sparring. Excellent. Now, we've got to get straight into it. A lot has been said since Tyson Fury did what he did against Deontay Wilde in that sensational yes. performance. But, again... We 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 can all agree it was a, a ridiculous fight. It was incredible yes. again. Tyson Fury has proved once more that you never back against him. You never go against Fury. He can fight whatever shape he's in. I suppose a couple of questions that come from it though. Just how good a performance was that for a Brit fighting abroad? I mean, where does it rank in terms of all-time great performances? Do you know what, Don? It's hard. Right? I think for excitement, it was unbelievable. For mm. an actual, I mean, it's a no Tyson person, so it's not me in any way sort of digging him out. I think I'm just sort of being honest, and I'm pretty sure his dad and some of his team would say the same. Tyson can box so much better than that. Yeah. I think if he would have boxed to his ability, that it would have been half of it exciting, half as exciting. Um, I think it, obviously he made a lot of mistakes, and if it wasn't for the unbelievable recovery powers, it wouldn't have been, <laughs> we wouldn't be talking about him being. Um, well, champion still, but wouldn't have been talking about what an amazing fight it was. But just for the excitement of it all, you know, the, the recovery made after round four, it was it was a, one of the great British like performances, but through probably for a different reason, not through a boxing masterclass or him doing mm. that, but just sort of excitement, you know, the heavyweight division for to stay up. Listen, there's a lot of people who stayed up all night, me being one of them after the Liverpool show and right through. And you're just praying the fight delivered. And I'll be honest, I'll be one of them who wasn't bothered about seeing a third fight. And there's a lot of people like me that's like, what's the point? They happen to uh, say the best to last, the boys did. And it's, um, it's a fight, you know, us Brits will talk about for many years. Do you know, in some ways though, was it more impressive the fact that he came in heavier than he's ever been? All right, Wilder was heavier yeah. than he'd ever been. You know, it looked like he hadn't really got a plan, but it didn't really matter because whatever was going to happen, he was still going to win. So it wasn't like he boxed his head off like in the first fight. It wasn't like he put it on him on the front <laughs> foot like in the second fight. It was like he was yeah. making it up as he went along. But because it's fury and because it doesn't matter what shape he's in, he can fight all night and he can get up every time he's put down and do what he does. I have, I have feel like Tyson just, there wasn't much technical about it. Like you say, there wasn't, anything too cute about it. I think he just sort of <laughs> outlasted him. He outlasted Deontay Wilder. And that's sort of what I'm saying. It wasn't meant to be like a criticism of, oh, Tyson can box so much better. Everyone who knows him knows he can box so much better. But um, it was just, I think it was just very much he outlasted Deontay Wilder. So what, what do you want to see next? We know that Joshua and took a rematch in probably in March of yep. next year. Dillian White, if he gets past Valin, is mandatory for the WBC. So what do you want to see? What's going to happen? Listen, ideally, the fight I want to see, which isn't going to happen, would be Tyson Fury versus Alexander Rusik. Um, that's not happening. Obviously, obviously Rusik and um, AJ are having the rematch. So Dillian White has got to come through Otto Wallin. That's, that's one of the... That's possibly one of the best next fights you could make after the obvious one, other than, obviously, the Anthony Joshua one. But we'll see what happens. I think um, either, either one's not going to happen too early. Some of you would think, I know Tyson said about enjoying Christmas with the family, so he's not going to go back into camp until the new year. That's for sure. But um, I think Tyson, it'd be interesting. It'd be great to see him back over here in the UK. He's, uh, his popularity is at a whole time. I, he couldn't get much higher, but it has after that fight. Um, but then there's also going to be, America are going to want him back over there again. and it's but it would it would be great I know he's mentioned it it would be great to see him in a stadium fight over here in the UK 
I think as well. He's also said that he'd love to fight Old Trafford one day. Which, yes. Uh, again, you know that would have been a, that would have been a dream for any any fight. That would particularly would have been yours as well. But could you just imagine him fighting over here? Could you imagine fighting at Old Trafford? Then can you imagine in the middle of winter maybe and whipping that shirt off and marching his way down Dean's Gate and again dancing the night away? <laughs> it would. There'd be a, there'd be a few nightclubs and bars that'd want the after party, wouldn't they? Be sure. To so not the way he did. I think that was all. I think as. Thrilling as the fight was, I think, for him to go to uh, the MGM Grand to the after party and have his top off with Steve <laughs> Ioki, that was every bit as impressive as the recovery of that fourth round, in my opinion. But uh, not just a massive character, and a massive character. And uh, it's the Tyson Fury way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right up to the point of him getting home to Morecambe, he had to get a taxi for the final 240 <laughs> miles. I mean, that, again, if that's not Fury, I don't, I don't know what it is. But it is, an incredible no, that's it. An incredible performance, and, and again, we look forward to seeing what he does next. And of course, Tyson Fury is linked to so many, and that this is a heavyweight special. And we caught up with somebody this week that, that again, has a great history with Tyson Fury, going back to the amateur days. He's just announced his retirement ahead of the Liverpool show at the weekend. He had a great career, maybe didn't pan out the way he want, would have wanted to, but we caught up with the big man himself, big David Price. Yeah, now no, it's the right time, Tom. Uh, and like you said, it's... As you start getting towards your mid thirties, anyway, for me personally, I was starting to look at, at maybe the exit route. At what point I was going to get out, um, because you know it, it's it's human nature, isn't it? You, you're not getting any younger. It's getting more difficult to recover in training sessions, and um, obviously, once the COVID pandemic came in and there was lack of opportunities, it kind of forced me hands really, but. It, I, was, I was never far away from calling it quits anyway. Part of the reason was because after I'd lost to Derek Chisora, you know, the, the fights I was going to be involved in, there was not really any glory in them, so to speak. It was like filling cards. Obviously, a couple of wins might have got me back into a big fight, but, you know, when, when, when you come to the realisation that you're never going to really... Well, you're never going to be a world champion or you're never going to be at the very top. You're fighting then just, just for the sake of fighting for money and that's when it can become a bit of a, bit of a problem. So it was, it was the right time to, to call it quits. That's good to hear though, isn't it? That you're not fighting for money. You know, you're not going to just carry on for that when so many fighters do that because they probably have to uh, and they don't have other options. Are you in a situation where thankfully... You've got more out of boxing than it's taken out of you. Yeah, exactly that. I kind of, I kind of got out on my own terms because of, um, the, la the last couple of years were, were great. I, I had big fights on big cards and it was, it was probably the most enjoyable period of my career. Obviously, uh, I mean, I know I, I had a great spell when I was British and Commonwealth champion coming through and I was, I was being billed as the next big thing alongside uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder and obviously it didn't pan out that way for me but the, the last couple of years it was like a bit of an Indian summer so I was, I was grateful for that um, and that's that's one of the reasons why I, I could do it on my terms there, there was a fight there was a fight offer on the table to fight in Liverpool and it, 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 you know it, it wasn't a bad a bad offer financially but I didn't even want to know who they were thinking of as far as the mm. opponent was concerned because my mind was made up. I, I didn't even want to be, be even start considering it because I, 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 once I'd made my decision, I thought I need, I need to stick by it now and, and not look back, really. Mm. You mentioned there that when you were coming through, and I think 2012 was a massive year for you when you were smashing everyone domestically. And that yes. was when, you know, yourself and Tyson... <laughs> turned over similar times you'd had the amateur fight you beat Tyson when you're amateurs you went on to win gold Commonwealth Games Beijing obviously we know you won bronze so amateur wise you certainly you certainly came out better than him then pros yeah. you're, you're both doing the business you were a little bit ahead of him obviously again some of the fights and some of the, the way you were taking care of domestic opponents was fantastic and as you say that rivalry was really simmering, simmering nicely I, I mean I remember some of the stuff that Tyson was coming out with to try and goad you, it was all getting crazy at, at, at times, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it, got, it got a bit heavy at times, didn't it? But um, yeah. it was it was obviously 
that was the way Tyson Fury was in them days, and, and he seemed to have settled down a little bit. But at, at that time, he was a younger man and he was a bit immature, and he said some things which at the time rubbed, rubbed me up the wrong way, rubbed other people up the wrong way. But yeah. but my stance on it was that I'm, I, I stayed true to myself as a as a person, as a character, and, and I'm, I wanted to let me fish through the talking. Uh, type of thing, you know. I'm more of a quiet man, so my 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 uh, response was right. Let me fist through the talk, and then mm. I will let him build the f- the fight up all he wants because it's only gonna make it bigger and better for me, and I'm not having to waste the energy doing all all, all the the talk, the hype, the threatening, and whatever was going on. We had a bit of back and forth, but I was mainly just trying to stay focused on the job and and. Uh, it was. It was similar nicely. It was. It was about to happen, and then I lost to uh, Tony Thompson. So it was. It was. It was frustrating. You know, it was around the corner the the Fiori fight, and, and I lost that fight. And then everything that happened from from then on in, uh, you know, everything that could have went wrong went wrong type of thing. Um, but it it just weren't meant to be that that Tyson Fiori fight and the professionals it ranks anyway. Um, and the amateurs had happened. It would have been great if it had happened at any point in the pros, but my my best chance to beat Tyson Fury, as I said, was when I'd just become British champion. Um, or, or at the time when I, I was mandatory challenger to his British title and he, he vacated the belt. That was that would have been my best opportunity to beat him because he was he was wrestless then and I was I was flying, my like confidence was up. Believed everything I hit, I'd knock out, and, and and that was the case. I was, I was just blasting everything in front of me, and uh, I think that would have been my best chance to do it. We know that it, with a bit more luck, for reasons that we just said, and, and one thing or another, it could have turned out different, but you still achieved a lot. And and again, you can look forward now. Is that the way you're approaching it all? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've, I've got to, like, like I said, the way, the way I'm looking at it. I've 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 spent times over the years, you know, what went on here, what have I done this different? And uh, if it if it was meant to happen, it would it would have happened. Uh, yeah. And 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 it's not just one thing that stopped it from happening. It's probably been many small things leading to, to the result of a fight. And it's sport at the end of the day. And I, I've said I've said it the other day and we all we all aspire to be the very best in in our chosen fields, um, especially sportsmen. But the reality of it is, a very very small percentage will go on to be the best, and that that in in every way boxing that's a, a small percentage again to be the best. It's how many people are the best. One one person or, or one of mm. might be three people who people be arguing is the best. So. You can aspire to be the best, but you can you can still be be proud of your achievements, even if you didn't become the best. Number one is because you tried, and number two is because you you contributed to the sport in your own way. Because without without the likes of myself, who's fighting, you know, your Pavekins on the chief support of the A D A J bill, um, you know, chief chief support fights like that. Generating hype like it did when it was British and Commonwealth champion generated a lot, a lot of interest in the sport, especially in Liverpool. And even though it was, it was hype and it was excitement and it didn't, it didn't come to fruition. It, it still, it still served the purpose because it generated interest. So I am proud. Yeah, I am proud. Um, definitely, definitely proud of my achievements, and that you, I've got to look at it that way because. Mm-hmm. If it didn't, I can't change any so so that's it. Uh, you know, I've got to look back and be proud and that's that. Yeah, well you you were never in fairness, you were never in a boring fight, were you? No, no. <laughs> but that was probably part of the problem. If they'd been yeah. a lot a bit more cautious and usually size and me and we reach a little bit more and but but that was that was never in me. I always I always when I was a younger man and be boxing in the gym, even on the G the G B squads and that. I used to fight like a smaller man because I didn't want to be the stereotypical tall boxer keeping everything long because I hated, I hated being the size I was when I was younger. Hated it. 
because it just shots mm. up out of nowhere. I'm, I'm an absolute giant, and, and it takes it takes a while to to be, become comfortable in your own skin type of thing. So I used to think I'm not I'm not boxing just like a tom, and I, I'll box. I'll show I can box short and, and mid range, and it probably um, it was probably a bad idea because once once you set in your ways in boxing, it's difficult to break them. And over the years, as much as I tried to just just be an expert long range boxer, it was just never in me um, to do that, especially for me for me size. Like so, it would have helped if it was because boring fights probably would have equaled better results. Um, you know, so yeah, uh, it was it was entertaining fights every time. I suppose every every fight I lost, even yeah, uh, yeah. Bar, bar in the Tepper fight, I had mm-hmm. as a, had the opponent wobbled or or on the floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's entertainment, as the jam said. Yeah, it was, and yeah, plenty to be proud about anyway. But when you when you now look at and you you are linked with fighters still, you know, active and and obviously the likes of Fury and and you know. Chisora and all these guys, even you know Dave Allen, that you, you handed a boxing lesson to. In fairness, yeah. in recent memory, and you know they're, they're still they're still knocking about. Obviously, they're still trying to get right right at the the elite. But the elite now is Tyson Fury again, a man who's you know you're going to be linked with him. You were linked with him as we've spoken about. And again, he's that was a crazy performance, wasn't it? And the heavyweight division now with him top of the tree, no doubt about it. it it's it's just it's a fascinating division, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's incredible now. Um, it was always going to be the case when when the clutch goals come to the end of their reign, there was going to be a void which needed to be filled, and there was a there was going to be that group of young heavyweights waiting to fill it, and that was going to create competition, but quality competition amongst each other. While while we found out who was going to be the next in line type of thing, and that's that's proven to be. The, the Gypsy King, hasn't it? That's proven to be Fury. Now he, he he's 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 the gaffer, and now you've got to have again just just under that everyone jostling for position to get the to get the the opportunity to to face him. Um, now what what we're going to have to see from Fury now is aside from the AJ fight, and obviously Yusuf, it, it's always politics. But if, but if he's going to keep busy and keep active, you know, we're going to need to see him go from these these trilogy fights with Deontay Wilder, which were, were massive and will have given massive satisfaction, massive fire in the belly when he's in training, to, to just going about his job in a professional manner and, and taking on all covers. And that, because that, that may be the case where he just has to, to face, you know, a another from from Germany or whoever it may be. So that might be the case with Fiori but so that might we might have to see his um, his professionalism on that side because it's gonna take time before the AJ or the Ustruck fight can can take place, I think. Now again, you know, obviously Josh is someone you know you've sparred Josh and famously I think you uh, you you dealt with him very well in sparring, so to speak. And uh, and again yeah. when you look at it now it is is it anyone that can take the crown off Fury? I mean, Usyk has three of the belts. Is he is he the major challenge now for, for Fury? And if so, how does that pan out? Yeah. I, uh, I think, yeah, it probably is the major challenge. The, the only thing with Usyk, which Fury, Fury can do what AJ couldn't do, and that was use his size and his weight to his advantage. And Tyson Fury fights in, a, in an unconventional manner. So... Whereas you six fighting AJ, who's being schooled by GB Boxing, and it's all textbook stuff, you know, it, 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 everything about his boxing is textbook, and, it, and it's brilliant, by the way. But that's exactly what Alexander Usyk used to from from the, the amateur days, the, the Olympic style boxing. What Tyson Fury brings is a completely different, unique style to the table, where he's throwing punches from angles that you, you, you don't really get taught. Uh, clubbing, clubbing, short punches down the back of the ear. He knows how to fight dirty. He knows how to lean on you, stick your hand in, his hand in your face. So many subtle little things. If you're watching slow motion against Deontay Wilder when he's had him hurt, and and he's he's almost doing it on instinct because it, it, it's just in him to do that. Some of these things you can't be, be taught, 
I think that's where Usyk will come on unstuck against Fiore because look at look at Derek Derek Chisora again. He's not your, your typical stand up old school mm. style boxer. Derek's got a bit of a bit of a different way, a lot more rugged. Now, mm. I think Tyson Fury is more rugged than Derek Chisora, only taller, and it, and it's them long arms. He, he looks like he's miles away, but the they seem to reach the opponent's head. So I think, although he's going to be an interesting fight, I think we'd see Fury maul him. Yeah, I, Fury, it doesn't matter with his 20 stone, 25 stone, a bit lighter. It looks like he can just fight every day of the year, doesn't he? I mean, it's just incredible. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, all, it's almost superhuman. It's, yeah. Like the pace that fight was fought at on Saturday. He, he's such such a natural fighter that you know in that ring he, he's so comfortable. Look at look at AJ after the Usyk fight. He had to sit on a stool mm. for for five minutes or whatever it was till he announced the decision. Obviously, he, he knew he'd lost, so that probably had something to do with it. But Fury, he fought at a, at a higher pace than that, and he was in a nightclub straight after it with his top off, dancing on a stage and all that, and. I don't know where he gets his energy. It's crazy. It looks like he just do it all day, and and he can he can do that whether he's nineteen stone seven or or eighteen stone seven because he's used to carrying the weight on that big frame. Uh, whereas Wilder wasn't used to carrying that extra weight, and, and it didn't do him any favors. But I don't think it matters anyway. What he weighed in at. Yeah. Well. What's next for you then? Anyway, now that you, you hang, you, the gloves are, are gone now, so to speak. But you're going to stay within the sport, I would imagine, in some way, shape, or form. So, what do you fancy doing? Um, do you know what? I, I, I've, I've got no intention of training fighters or, or managing, but I'd like to pass pass advice on, or, or just just to be involved now in the gym. Just just keep going back in the gym with with the uh, with Joe McNally and Declan. They're, they're training Liam Smith, who won at the weekend. And he was my trainer, Joe McNally, for the last two years in my career and, and done a great job. And so I, I like to think I'm still part part of the team in that circle. So I'll, I'll just go in and out the gym. I'll keep myself fit and training. Um, and, and yeah, I don't really want to dwell too much on, on what's, what's happened in the past and, and just move forward. So I've, I've, I've got a business set up myself doing like building work, things like that. That's keep me occupied, keep me busy, which is which is massively important for a retired sportsman. You know, where if you go from training and, and competing to sitting down doing nothing, sitting sitting in cafes or whatever all day, you, you end up in a bit of a dark place. So I, I'm fortunate really because I've uh, I've got somewhere to focus my energies on, and, and that's what I want to do. It looks fantastic where you are. You've got to give us a tour of that place. I know we're in your bar. So yeah, just show yeah. us around there, dude. Before you go, show us around. Go on, mate. Yeah. I got this bar put in this house. I bought, I bought this house eight years ago, just after the second Tony Thompson fight. And I, want, I wanted a bar in it. So my mate, um, Spencer Brown, up in Blackpool, he's like a, a memorabilia dealer. He gave me yeah, a load yeah, of... Knows, uh, yeah. You know Spencer, yeah? yeah Give me a yeah. load of uh, signed memorabilia, Muhammad Ali, and um, the Mike Tyson. There, there's me. I don't know if you can see that. That's me on the Ring magazine. That was in uh, 2012. Look, it says Real Britannia. You play heavyweights, poised to succeed, clutch goals, and I'm at the forefront, which didn't, didn't work out. He got he got there, didn't he? The big fella at the back, but well done to him. Um, yeah, my Tyson days myself with the, the British and Commonwealth and all the old fighters, Carmen Basilio, Jake Lamotta, Sir Henry, Ruben Carter, uh, who's that one, Gene Fulmer? And that that's a um, a prop off a stage, like a stage play that me and Tony values shirts with on a washing line while Liverpool and Everton fans argue that over over the footy and they give me that in the frame. So yeah, so that's that. That's me, me little bar there. Let me tell you, oh yeah, there, there's the uh, centerpiece at the minute. There's the four the European Cup winners medal, Super Cup, World Club Cup and the Premier League when Liverpool had that great Never season. Yeah. So so this is me 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 cave, yeah. 
Well, big David Price there, who should be very proud of his career. And it's a great little man cave he's got there as well. So, uh, uh, again, all things going forward for him. We wish him all the very best. What a character. What a lovely guy he is. More Genuinely than anything, Dom, David Price is one of the best people I've met in boxing. Right mm. from the amateurs. I always remember how he was on, like, you know, the England camps, uh, the GB camps, how he was with every lad. Um, great lad. And it's an unbelievable career. Listen, he didn't get that world title as a professional, but he, um, it was an unbelievable career, an Olympic medal. He still had some great nights as a professional and I think he could be here all day. There was uh, some of the fights he lost, um, whether their opponent should have been in the ring or not is another thing, but yeah, save yeah. that for another day, as long as it is. But um, no, great guy. And listen, obviously, knew the big man very well. I was there the night he boxed Tyson Fury at the Women's Show Forum. So, and there was, there was a time in, in the career where David Price was seen as the, the heir to the throne. Um, like I say, a very dangerous heavyweight. Certainly is, yeah, certainly was, and as you say, yeah. Again, look at the draw, rubber the green, things could have been very different. But anyway, he's content and he moves on forward with his life and he, he's got his health and his family and we wish him all the very, very best. But of course, it was, uh, it was something of a guest of honour around the fight week building up to the Liverpool show, which was an interesting week for yourself, Anthony, because of course we were all over it. We were at the... The, the media workout, we're at the press conference, but then you were meant to be in the corner with Natasha Jonas. That one fell through. Rhiannon Dixon, she was at the press conference, still fell through. That's boxing, I suppose, but Rhiannon's got to get on with it. You had to get on with it. Yes. So I was meant to be cornering for Natasha Jonas because Joe Gallagher was with Callum Johnson and then obviously Rhiannon Dixon, my own girl. So I was really looking forward to it. There was both on early and then I was going to um, watch, watch what was a fantastic bill and also the main event with a mate, Liam Smith. So instead, I just had to watch the main event and go right through to the uh, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight. So Sunday wasn't the nicest of days for me. But if you do the crime, you deserve to do the time. So I've done that. And um, it was, listen, I think it's just boxing and it was just speaking. Obviously, I really felt for both girls, um, and especially Rihanna, who was meant to be her first fight on, you know, a matchroom show. But, Hopefully, we'll have some fight news very soon. And um, that's just part of boxing. That's just part of boxing. Natasha will also, she'll have a fight date very soon. Mm. Now, quite rightly, Tyson Fury got most of the tension over the weekend. But Smith Fowler, what performance yeah. from Liam Smith? But not just that. When you go through the yeah. undercards, some brilliant performances throughout, uh, wasn't there? We, there was. There was some unbelievable performances. Um, obviously, you, you've got to give a shout out to Troy Williamson him and, and Ted Cheeseman because Ted's never in a bad fight. Never in a bad fight, but Troy really burst onto the scene. He was, uh, but you know, throughout the card, we could, we could be here, we could be here all day, even right from early on. You know, Luke Willis finally getting mm. his opportunity on the big stage and taking and taking it well against Ryland Charlie in box very well. But there was um, some fantastic performances. But in the main event, Liam and um, Anthony Powell, the atmosphere in there was um, absolutely amazing, especially during the ring walks and. Liam, you know, come through like I don't want to say class, class and experience come through. Um, Anthony Fowler had his moments in what was a great fight. I think Liam almost paid the price for going a bit too early, speaking to him and, you know, his coach Joe McNally and Declan after it. He just went a little bit too early and tried imposing himself on Anthony Fowler a little bit, Fowler a little bit too early. And Anthony had some great success and, and he can come again. But with Liam now, he's also, listen, Liam's had a fantastic career. But that's one of his great nights. First time in Liverpool, you know, in the in the arena there to pack it out in a local derby. It's a night he'll remember forever. Yeah, Liam told us recently that he'd swap everything that he's achieved in the boxing ring just to pull on a Liverpool shirt for a couple of minutes in front of the cop, which tells you what you need to know and where we're going next with this. Yes. because. Yep. His previous fight was in the middle of nowhere in the eastern Russia, and he managed to still play Sunday football after about, what, two hours sleep or something. He did it again. Yep. He was out playing football for his team on Sunday morning after that fight. Uh, the the yep. lad's not right. He's not right, is he? No, he's not. He's not. i seen him about half nine in the fight hotel, um, and he was just he was fresh as out. I'd like, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a great fight to watch, but he was fresh as out, and he was, yeah, he was off to win. Um, Play and I want to, you know, I really want to say, oh, it was terrible. He, you know, he had to come off after he scored as well. So um, <laughs> it sounds like he couldn't miss it. He had some weekend to remember, did Liam Smith? 
He certainly did. And we've got another weekend to look forward to because there's another decent yeah. card that's coming up now. It's Boxer, it's Sky Sports this time around. And it yeah. is back in the northeast. It's in Newcastle. Lewis Ritson's going to be back out again. Chris Eubank Jr. gets his yes. fight after the postponement a couple of weeks ago, which uh, was all a bit bizarre, but he gets his chance to shine again. And also, world champion Savannah Marshall's out. Huey Fury back in the ring again. So what better than our producer, Josh, to catch up with his great mate, Peter Fury. Joined here by trainer Peter Fury. It's a big weekend for you in Newcastle, Peter. You've got two fighters on the bill on Sky Sports. Uh, first of all, how have preparations been going in the gym with both Huey and Savannah? That's been going very good, Josh. Uh, they're ready now. They're just uh, winding down, a bit of stretching and stuff, just easing off and just ticking over. And just, that's it, really. The hard work's done. They're just uh, looking forward now to fight night. And before we get on to the fights themselves, how, how did the, the deal for yourself and Huey and Savannah uh, working with Sky Sports and Boxer come about? Uh, they just put something to us and it was uh, and it suited for what we wanted, you know, and that's getting regular fights um, and, you know, making both fight, fighters a main priority. And, um, you know, and that, it suited us, so we went, we went for Sky. And Savannah, obviously, we all know what she's capable of. Uh, what can we expect on uh, Saturday night from uh, Savannah? Well, let's see. She's up against an unbeaten opponent, uh, you know, similar record. She's had, well, she's had more fights, actually. Um, so it's, it's going to be good. She's as big as Savannah, saying she's got a good punch as well. So it's, uh, it'll be fireworks. And the fight with Savannah that everyone wants uh, is that Carissa Shields fight. Carissa Shields is part of this... Um, top ramp boxer sky um thing going forward is that a fight that we can still see happen perhaps later on this year or early next year it won't happen this year but it'll definitely happen next year providing they keep winning so if they, them fights providing everything goes well definitely should be happening next year there's no reason why it shouldn't and that's what both of them are working towards uh, definitely. And that'd be an uh, absolutely fantastic fight when that does happen. And uh, Clarissa, uh, well, Savannah, we've spoken to Savannah a few times as well. And uh, from your point of view, with Clarissa dipping her toe into the world of MMA as well, is that just raising the profile a bit more? And that when these two do meet, there'll be more eyes on it as well now? I think so. I think it's all good. Um, you know, but both of these fighters need each other. So I think it's... Uh... I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, definitely. And so I'm really um, looking forward. I'm looking forward to these fights happening. Yeah, definitely. And as I've mentioned to you a few times as well, women's boxing is just on the rise and these two are at the very top of their game. And for them to meet, it just puts women's boxing in another stratosphere and it uh, just more eyes on it and it'll be fantastic. I think between these two, and you know, I think it will be one of the biggest fights in women's boxing. Because, you know, you've got both of them that really want to win. And, you know, Savannah can box and punch as well. So they're not going to get in there and have a tip or tap around. It's going to come down to who wants it the most. And there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of leather flying, that's for sure. And you mentioned, we mentioned uh, women's box, but I think it could be just one of the great fights in boxing, uh, not just uh, women's box, but in boxing in general, it could be one of the greatest fights next year. Definitely. It will be. And I'm looking forward to it. That's why we're in sport and uh, I want to see these big fights happening. And, you know, as far as we're concerned, you know, they need to happen and, you know, God willing, it will next year. No, definitely. And then uh, Huey on the card as well, taking on Christian Hammer. You've obviously uh, been in the corner opposite Christian Hammer previously. What type of fight can we expect in this one? Well, uh, he's, he's, well, since, uh, since we last boxed him, he's got a lot more experience under his belt. You know, I think he'd had 16 or 17 fights back then. You know, you're looking at a guy now that's a 30 plus fight. You know, he's, he's a lot older. You know, he's a wiser. And uh, let's see. You know, he's got, uh, you know, he's not, he's durable. He, um, so he presents his own problems. He's, uh, you know, look, you can't, he's, he's not somebody you can overlook. He's, uh, he's certainly a gatekeeper to world level. Let's put it that way. So he's a, he's a good, he's a good opponent. 
Yeah, definitely. And Huey, uh, you mentioned uh, Christian Hammer. He's a gatekeeper to world level. Uh, Huey has been at that world level before and just failed at that final hurdle. Uh, what can we expect from Huey beyond this fight going into next year? It's a really hot division at the moment. It is a hot division. Um, you know, it's all about dusting yourself off, working in the gym and improving your job. So that's what we're here to do. You know, we're not interested in a, in a, in a, in a points loss and all of a sudden that's the end of somebody's career. You know, so it's how it's, you know, it's a young man learning his job. But look, all that aside, let's get in there and see what people's point of view is after Saturday. No, definitely. And then... In terms of um, going into next year for both Savannah and Huey, what, what can we expect beyond this show in Newcastle for the pair of them? Uh, Going to be exciting for yourself and for the fighters. Yeah, they've got a, all being well on this show. Then they're, they're on again, I think, around 11th of December. or So early December anyway. So they're, they're, they're scheduled to go be on again. So uh, we, we'll see them both out um, two times this year. Well, always insightful piece of fury. Interesting as well that Savannah and Huey could be out so soon again back in, well, early-ish December. And another man that is hoping to be out early December, same card presumably, is a fella that uh, has had some interesting news recently. Another heavyweight, because of course this is a heavyweight special. It is Nathan Gorman. He's very excited about what may happen over the next few months and years. So we caught up with Nathan a little bit earlier. Well, Nathan, good to see you. Uh, again, you know, Big news, Wasserman signing and everything yep. going well here now. So just give us a little bit of insight to how this all came about. Uh, it came about, oh, about, well, probably now about six, six to eight weeks ago, maybe a bit longer than that. Um, they got in contact with my management team. Obviously, they said we'd like, you know, Kelly and Nisei, the Salons and Wasserman as well. So we like, we like, obviously, what we see with Nathan. We'd like to have a, you know, a coffee, a sit down. He said, we've got a few ideas, you know, a deal, etc. So I was, I was all up for it. I thought, yeah, definitely, because obviously I've been, a, I've been a big fan of, like, Kelly and Nisi anyway with what they used to promote, what, what they've been promoting anyway with the, you know, the the world the big world boxing series and things. Um, and I've heard good things about Wasserman too. So I went to the meeting and obviously they offered me a deal and they offered me not just a deal, a plan, which is the main thing, especially for uh, heavyweight, being active and having a good plan. And yeah, mate, that's that's how it really kicked off. And um, I signed with them. I like like well, like what I heard. I had a couple of meetings with them. It didn't take too long of a deal. You know, nothing was long winded, um, and it was done and dusted. I mean, fighters want structure and want to know where they're going to be in a certain period of time and how many fights you're going to have and all that. It's that kind of security that every fighter wants. Now, I know you can't give me too much detail about who you're going to be fighting or anything like that, but. The idea is obviously you're going to be a Sky Sports fighter now going forward, and you've got that profile. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, they got dates off Sky now. What we what we witnessed the other weekend, you know, the the joining up with Sky. Um, so obviously they got the dates, and it's going to be good. Obviously, I previously boxed on BT, BT, so it's going to be good to change over. I've, you know, I've been on BT and I've had some good times there. But obviously, going onto Sky now, which is probably the biggest platform in in sports, in my in my personal opinion. So it's going to be great. Obviously, the dates they've got, it works for me. They give me proper proper camps, etc. So there's no excuses, really. So you obviously then you see so your management is Wasserman be promoted by Boxer on Sky Sports. That's the way it's going yes. to work? No, my promoter is Wasserman and obviously right. Sowlands as well. And they got Sky dates, so it's like a link-up type of thing. Right, got um, you, yeah, yeah. So like Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank's with Wasserman and Sowlands. Yeah. And he can box on, you know, the Sky Sports shows and stuff. Um, it'll be the same with me and the and other Wasserman boxers. Okay. So when can we expect you out? Uh, we're looking at beginning of December, so eight to nine weeks' time. Um, yeah, looking forward to it, to be fair. Obviously, I haven't boxed since March, so it's coming up, you know, near on 10 months. Um, mm -hmm. It's a long time, in it? So, obviously, I want to get yeah. the ball rolling first in December. And hopefully get out beginning of the year, then proceed from there. Obviously, I've got to win my me next one first in life before I can plan yeah, after that. You've had, couple, you've had a couple of wins under your belt since the, the Bois blip. But now, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. this is a new beginning for you. You're still an, an absolute baby in heavyweight terms. Yeah, as well, aren't you? exactly. Exactly. I'm only 25 years of age, you know, and this, this, num this fight number 20 coming in. So, 
like you said, I, I've obviously had two 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 wins after the Daniel fight, which at the time it was it was the end of the world. But now looking look, looking at it, it it's, an, it's an experience. You know, I experienced so much and learned so much about myself as well after that fight, going into that fight. Um, so I can only take all the negatives and turn them into positives. Yeah, it's new, obviously, for you with Wasserman and Sky Sports, but obviously a little while ago, you left the Hatton gym very amicably, but it's a long way yes. from where you live in Nantwich to get to hide every day and back and oh, all yeah. the rest of it. But well, now you... Were... I was working out, mate. It was like 120, 130 mile every day, which it's all, it takes its, yeah. takes its tell. That period of time, I need my rest and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and that, that, you've got to train. It's, and it's more draining travelling, isn't it? You know, yeah, particularly exactly. That, exactly. It's yeah, not exactly. train easy, is it? No, definitely not, no. But now you have linked up with a, a guy that you've known for a long time in your neck of the woods, the South Cheshire ABC, Nathan Clark, who yeah. people would remember box Connor Bennett, didn't go his way. Right. His yeah. night, but, but uh, you know, he had a great oh, amateur yeah, 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 exactly. Truthfully, yeah. you don't have to be you can be a world champion boxer or you could literally be the greatest pound pound boxer ever lived. Doesn't mean you're going to be a world-class coach. There's a big difference between being a world-class coach an experienced coach and a world-class boxer. Yeah. It's like, say if I won five world titles, granted I've had experience as a boxer, but I've got zero as a trainer. Mm. So th th this, is the, this is the thing. And obviously I've got Nathan Clark as well as Lyndon Newborn. Lyndon's trained everything, but a world champion, he's trained British champions, European champions. So all that knowledge together. And plus mm. Nathan, I've known Nathan since I've been 15 years of age. Mm. So to be fair, I've known Lyndon since about the same amount of time, since about 16, 17. So they know me inside and out. And I feel like I'm really developing every day. Yeah. I really do. And Nathan is an old head on young shoulders anyway. And I've yeah. seen him coaching and, you know, he's, a, he's an excellent coach. And I can totally yeah, understand definitely. why you've, you've linked up with him because... You know, he knows what he's doing anyway. He's been there as an amateur and as a and as a pro, obviously, but he's just focusing yeah. on the coaching now. So what do you yeah. what do you intend to achieve together now? Because you're you're in a not very fashionable part of the world for boxing. You're, you know, obviously yeah. in South Russia. It's not it's not known for champions, but you obviously yeah. want to still achieve and get right to the very top. Oh, million, percent. million percent, definitely. Obviously, first and foremost, win me next fight first, which will be for a title and it'll be, you know, against a very credible. The box of that again, win that, then proceed. Really, I want to get truthfully main asset for me is to get to the world number one, and that's where I want to be. You know, on a box for a world title and, and claim it. Um, that's me aspirations. I think in boxing, if you don't have that mentality, oh, I'll settle for, set for second best. You beat before you go to the ring, so you've got to have that mentality where you want to be number one. And what a division! I mean, again, when we look at it domestically, oh, on fire. Right, it's, it's just incredible because we mentioned Dubois, and I'm sure you you, you down the line you, you might do that one again, but. As well as that, there's yourself in there. Then the Chisora and Parker are going to do it again. There's Joe Joyce, yeah. who, again, yeah. you know, people shouldn't forget about him for obvious no, reasons. No. No, you know, there's uh, Dillian White, who's sniffing around the, the very elite. And then, you know, again, we're, we're talking Joshua Usyk soon, but I'll yeah. uh, talk at the minute quite rightly, is, is a, a fella that you know all too well, Tyson Fury, and doing what he's just yes. done against Wilder. The division is ridiculous, but Tyson Fury oh. now, I think everyone has to say, is absolutely the king. He's he's top of the tree and he's number one. I, I've always said since the get-go, everyone kept telling me, oh, Joshua's the man, Joshua's this, which Joshua is, he can't, Joshua is extremely good. But Tyson, Tyson's just that a lot more better. That's that's the only problem. There's just levels to it. And Tyson Fury's on a different level. That's all it is. He, In my opinion, I think Anthony Joshua is an easier fight for Tyson than Wilder is. I think so. Um, not discrediting Joshua because he's incredible, which he is, but I think Tyson Fury is just a level on his own. And yeah, the yeah. only the only the only person to beat Tyson is Tyson himself. Well, you, you've shared many around with him, haven't you? Sparring wise, yeah. I know obviously yeah. he was training in in the Hatton Gym as well when he was getting yeah. ready for one of the first time around. So yeah. you've seen you've seen his development all the way through. I know you, you, there's a family connection there and all the rest of it. So exactly. Do you feel he'll carry on? Because, uh, again, there's lots of people thinking, well, has he done it all now? In his own head, does he maybe think? No, I think Tyson, as long as he's fit and able, will continue boxing wherever he'll be, 40 or 50. I think as long as he's fit and able, he'll continue boxing because he just loves it. 
let's be fair, he's got hundreds of millions in the bank already, so he doesn't need he doesn't do it for the money exactly. He doesn't do it for fame. He just does it because he loves boxing. Um when he obviously when I first saw him come back come back from when he was ill and stuff, he come back through the gym door, 28, 29 stone. And he said he sat down, he said, I'm gonna win the world heavyweight title back. And obviously to where he is now, it's unbelievable. Such a great ambassador, obviously, of people what's out there suffering with mental health and all things like that. It's just going to show you what can be achieved. From your own point of view, though, you don't want him going on till he's 40 or 50, surely, because, you know... He... I don't know. <laughs> He'll probably still be number one then. <laughs> you need to get your hands on one of them belts, so, you know... Yeah, he definitely. Needs to I'm going to have to tell him, and I? <laughs> You'll have to have words, yeah. But, again, there's, there's some potentially intriguing ones for yourself anyway. Just, to, you know, I can imagine early next year with some of the, the guys that might consider themselves on a similar level to you, maybe yes. a Wardley, Bad Bitch, yes. even your old mate Dave Allen. Who's, uh, yeah, yeah, still yeah exactly. the, I mean, are they, these are all big guns? domestic fights. These are all big de- domestic fights. What people would like to see, obviously, you mentioned Wardley, Babbage, obviously Dave Allen. These are, the, 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 these are really good domestic fights. When the winner can obviously move on to European level, then like, the, mm-hmm. the winner ain't world level because you got to earn your stripes. You got to go from there to European level, then so forth mm-hmm. and so on. Um, but the extremely good domestic fights are very exciting fights. Well, capture the public's imagination in my opinion well Nathan Gorman there he's got a real spring in his step as you would imagine as well so interesting listening to him talking about Tyson Fury though Anthony we're bringing it back to the big man to the Gypsy King because he knows him so well of course and he's he shared the the gym with him so many times over the years frightening for anyone when he when Nathan says he could fight when he's 40 or 50 but he's going to go on anyway he's definitely going to fight on so if that's the case everyone else should pack up should they it's, do you know what? You won't put the self belief Tyson Fury's got. You'd, um, you'd never rule anything out with him. You never would. But, um, listen, I think that there's some great fights to be made in that heavyweight division still, even though you've got to put him top of that pile without a doubt. Hopefully, politics don't get in the way of them. And I'm sure well, any night involving Tyson Fury is going to be a huge night. But I'd like to see now, before we just wrap up, I'd love to see the old Trafford night, selfishly. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to see him in that and whether it be AJ or not I don't know if not I'd love to see that fight there's a few fights and listen Dillian White he's uh, he's been around a long time waiting for that shot so I think there's a good chance we see that next Excellent well we will wrap this this up now Anthony I think the cold's getting a little bit better you're sounding a bit better now a bit brighter how are you feeling? It, it is a bit you know me Dom. I just get on with things don't I I uh, Surviving, mate. I'm surviving. Tough time, but sometimes you just got to push through them, haven't we, Dom? Do indeed. Listen, that's the way it is. But finally then, you know, have you, have you got into the squid game yet? It seems that everyone's there going on about this. It might, it might be mate, right up your street, though. Mate, I think it will be, but I've not started it yet. I've not started it. I keep catching Love Island USA, but I'm a bit slow getting into it. So I think another oh, night right. to Listen, I'll take it back. games get started. If you found Love Island in other territories, there's, there's no there's no hope for anything else. So we'll just leave it at that. I think that's it. The Squid Game, Squid Game will be getting started soon. Right. Okay, though. Well, great to see you in the gym, man. And uh, you know, you just rest yourself. Don't want that cold getting any worse you, as you're on the men now. But uh, we'll we'll catch you soon. And um, it's been the Thank heavyweight you. special. Means a lot. Thanks to all the guests today. It's been really really good fun. And that has been the Betfred Boxing Show. I'll see you next week.